Hey guys, thanks for joining. In today's video, we're going to take a look at problem 779 on leak code, kth symbol, and grammar. So what we'll do is first we'll go over the problem description, then we'll perform an analysis on how we can implement a solution. We'll call out any edge cases that we have to worry about. We'll discuss what kinds of data structures and algorithms will get us the most efficient solution possible. And lastly, we'll actually go ahead and implement and submit the code. I'm going to be coding this in Java, but if you want to follow along in a different language, that's fine because all of the core concepts are going to carry over from language to language. So on to the problem description itself. The problem reads, we build a table of n rows, which is one indexed. We start by writing zero on the first row. Then in subsequent rows, we look at the previous row and replace each occurrence of zero with zero one and each occurrence of one or the one zero. So for the first few rows, they give us an example here. The first row is zero, the second is zero one. And the third is 0, 1, 1, 0. Given two integers n and k, return the kth symbol in the nth row of a table of n rows. So it sounds like what they want us to do is generate the table or do something similar to that. Then in the last row, get the kth symbol. So a few examples they give us. Uh, the first one's a trivial case, n is equal to 1, k is equal to 1. That just corresponds to the first item in the first row, which by definition that they give us is zero. And the second example they give us n is equal to two, k is equal to one, which is also zero, as you can see here. And similarly, when k is equal to two, we have one. So let's think about how we can actually implement a solution for this. One idea might be to use a linked list or an array and actually generate the table either as a two-dimensional matrix or an array in place or a linked list in place by following these rules. Then when we get to the last row, we can iterate through the items and get the kth element. That would work, but that would be a bit space and time inefficient. If we go to the bottom of the constraints where they show us, we see that n can be less than or equal to 30. And as we're going to see shortly, that means that the output string can be very large. So if we're generating all the way to 30 and then iterating over that string, that'll definitely be inefficient. So then what else can we do? So let's think about this not from a perspective of generating the string, but a perspective of iterating through it or looking through some reduced search space. So I've drawn something on a whiteboard that'll help us analyze the problem a little bit further. I'm going to bring that into view now. So here we see a diagram which includes a partial binary tree and a few other things as well. I'll get to those in a moment. But the tree itself represents the actual string that will be generated after, in this case, n is equal to 5, so 5 iterations. So at the top row we have the depth corresponding to the value of n is equal to 1. We have a value of 0 and that's it. That's what they give us initially. Then in the next depth we see 0 and 1, which is the first production from 0. Now if we were to have this tree fully expanded, in the third row we would see 0, 1, 1, 0. But in this case, we're just seeing one zero from the right subtree. Furthermore, on level four, it's a similar thing. It expands to one, it expands to zero. We're going down the right path, so we go to zero. And finally, at d is equal to five, n is equal to five, we get to the value zero. So this actually corresponds to an example input where n is equal to five and k is equal to 11. And by following the tree in this way, we can see that the 11th character itself is zero. So before I get into how we were able to determine that, I'm going to call out what we see here. In the top, we can see characters 1 through 8 on the left of the first node, characters 9 through 16 on the right of the first node. So we're able to determine that by considering the size of the total output string, and then consider how the production rules will produce these strings iteratively. So we can say the string length is 16 because as any binary tree works, the total size of the leaf nodes, or the count of them that is, will be equal to 2 to the power of the depth of the tree. So in this case, it's actually 2 to the power of n minus 1 because the first level has one node only. So 2 to the 0th power is equal to 1, 2 to the 1th power is equal to 2, as we see in the next row, etc., etc. So from this, we can determine, okay, characters 1 through 8 will be on the left of the first node, characters 9 through 16 on the right of it. And since we're looking for the 11th character, we can entirely ignore the left subtree, move to the right subtree, where we have 1 now. We can see 9 through 12 to the left, 13 through 16 to the right. We can iterate, to, or we can move to the left for that reason. And notice there's a 1 here instead of a 0. We flipped it because that's how the production rule is telling us to do it. If we have a 1, then the next 
part will be a 1, 0 instead of a 0, 1. So coming here, we can see we move to the right, we move to the left, finally we get to that 0 digit, the 11th character, and we can return that value. So with this, we can actually determine the answer without needing to generate the string at all. So let's go back to the code base and actually begin coding a solution for this. So what we just described looks kind of like binary search, but it's not exactly binary search, but it is moving through the search tree in a similar manner. So that's the approach we're going to take here. So the first thing we're going to do is introduce a few variables which will help us through the iteration and then we'll implement a while loop to actually iterate through the different depths of the tree. And finally, we'll return the value that we find, a zero or a one. So first, we're going to make a variable to calculate half of the length of the overall string. And I'll get to why it's half in a minute. So remember that we said that the overall string length will be 2 to the power of n minus 1 due to the tree-like nature of the problem. So the halfway point will be 2 to the power of n minus 2. We're going to use a boolean here just for simplicity. We'll flip this when it becomes 1, and we'll flip it back if it has to become 0 again, etc., etc. That will correspond to the value of the current node that the problem is iterating over. Then we'll actually iterate through the tree. I'm going to say while n is greater than 1, we're going to actually decrement n as we go. We'll keep looping until n becomes 1, and then we'll just return whatever value we have for is 0. Then we're going to compare the value of k to the value of string length half. In other words, we want to see if k falls on the right subtree or the left subtree. If it does, we're going to flip is 0. And we're going to subtract string length half from k. The reason we're doing the subtraction is so that in future iterations, k will be focused within the subtree itself. So in other words, k will be changing so it's relative to whatever subtree we're currently exploring. Then we're going to prepare for the next loop by decrementing n and dividing string length half by 2. Then at the end, we have a value for is 0. If it's true, we're going to return 0, otherwise return a 1. Okay, so with this, we actually have the full implementation. We did not need to actually generate the string, and we didn't even have to implement a tree with nodes or anything like that either. We were able to do that implicitly just through these operations. So let's go ahead and submit this and see if it's correct. Okay, so I've run the solution a few times just to make sure we read out any inconsistencies between trials. And we do have a performance solution, so I think we can accept what we have here. So that covers the content for this video. If you made it to the end, please leave a like and subscribe so that you can stay up to date on more LeetCode videos, and it really helps out the channel. And also be sure to check out our website, bitethisstore.com, where we have tons of programming articles on topics of data structures, algorithms, web design, and other programming topics. And we also have an online store with mugs, laptop sleeves, and other merch related to programming memes and programming humor. It's definitely worth taking a look at. Thanks for watching.